this crop is changing really, really fast. We're seeing this quick change in crop driven mostly by diseases and a little bit by temperature. On the temperature side, maybe some of our early planted, earlier maturity hybrids that went through a lot of grain fill in the really high heat through August, push that stuff along quicker than what it's used to. If you were planted later or have later maturing corn, it spent more of its time in our cooler temperatures that we, you know, more recently experienced. So pushing that early stuff along faster, getting it to maturity quicker than what we're used to. When it comes to the diseases, whether it be southern rust, tar spot, anthracnose top dieback, there's not much we can do about that now. However, what we can do is look forward, come out here, do our push test, assess our stalk integrity, and at least help ourselves out to make sure that we're ahead of corn potentially falling down. Fungicide applications this year have played a crucial role, and they're probably gonna be worth 35 to 50 bushels in most cases. The job of that tassel application of fungicide was to preserve and keep healthy the leaves from the ear and above because those are our yield makers. And it did a pretty good job, even though in some cases, by the time it wore off, the disease was still running hot and heavy. And could we have benefited from a second application? In some cases, yes, but in a lot of cases, it might not have had a return on that investment. Now, while we preserved a lot of our yield from those applications, the leaves from the ear and below still have a purpose. And the purpose of these leaves is for the maintenance of the stalk and the root. So while we preserved that stuff up there and kept it healthy for long enough to maintain some yield, these were still sitting down here in diseased land. And in a lot of cases, you can look down the row and you'll see green tissue from the ear and above. And from the ear and below, she's gone. So even if we have a field that's staying pretty green, staying pretty healthy and didn't die early, we could still have some stock quality issues. That's why it's really important to be going out and assessing your field, doing your push tests and making sure that the fields that are going to have to wait are going to stand. So the field that I'm in right now did die early, but there's some really good examples of what we're looking for. So this plant right here, if you've got a field that most of the stalks look like this, we've still got some green to it. There's some integrity there, right? They aren't hollow. You can see down here that the roots are still green. Those brace roots are still green. That's a good sign that the roots down below are still going to hang on and they're not starting to rot away. The ear on this guy was still up. So we push on him. He's good, he's green, he's healthy. That guy, if I've got a field of plants like this, even though the leaves are out of it, he would be okay for later harvest. Now, in contrast, you can see this plant here where we have the ear turned down. The stalk is brown, so you pinch it, there's not much left in there. And you can also see that these roots, you pinch those, those are also dead. So we're gonna start having that root mass start to degrade as well, especially if we start to get some moisture. When you dig up and split this plant here, you're going to notice the rot that we've got in here. So we've got this crown is rotted out and you can even see some pink discoloration pointing at either a fusarium crown rot or a gibberella stalk rot. And then we've got the stalk rot going in here as well. Once you have crown rot, most of the time you're gonna end up with stalk rot because that crown is the plumbing for the rest of the plant. And once you get rot of that crown, you have disrupted all moisture and nutrient flow through the plant. And since we're trying to fill grain, it's gonna steal it from that stalk. And then as soon as you start to cannibalize the stalk, you're gonna start getting those rots taking over as well. Now, not all of our stalk and crown integrity is going to be because of the leaf disease attacking that plant. I'm thinking back to, especially in terms of the crown rot, I'm thinking back to those fields that maybe were planted 
mid to early April and then got a big heavy soaking rain on it. They sat in the cold soil and it took a while to get up out of the ground. So in a lot of cases that fusarium crown rot, that pathogen is infecting in the first two weeks after planting. And then it can sit there and wait until you get stress on a plant. Well, filling grain sometimes is stress enough, but filling grain while you're getting attacked by all these pathogens is certainly another big stress as well. So any of those early fusarium crown rot infections are definitely making themselves known. And then you tack on top of it how wet and soggy we were in August and we've just created an environment down there on top of the stress, on top of the disease and maybe the infection that was already down there from early this spring and we really set up for a good crown a, a good crown rot year. Harvest is just starting to gear up in my area and if there was one thing I could if there's two things I can get you to do it's get the combines out, get them ready, maybe start nosing into some stuff and go out and push some corn around. I would much rather have to go out and harvest some standing corn a little bit wetter than I want to than to have to go out a month later and pick it up off the ground. There's going to be some decent corn out here. There's going to be some great corn out there, but there's also going to be some surprises. What I'm noticing so far is that stuff is drier than we're expecting it to be, and it's extremely variable across the field. So that's all I've got for today. If you've got any questions, call, text, or email. Be safe out there.